What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Arnie's. I'll be your host today, Matt Johnson, a.k.a. the one guy who hates Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm Keith Baker, a.k.a. the biggest Wonder Woman 84 hater. And I'm Austin Terry, a.k.a. the Attack of the Clones superfan. Golly. <laughs> we are so... There's so much variety with us. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, guys, we hope you're having a great week and weekend. We've done The Boys and The Mandalorian Season 2 reviews so far, and today is another big day because we are starting our newest bonus series, The Wanda's Talking the Vision. Naturally, this is where we'll be breaking down each and every episode of WandaVision on Disney Plus as they come out week to week. Our main episodes come out every Tuesday. This week, we'll be discussing our thoughts on Quantum of Solace, or Solace. We do talk about the episode, we still don't know. As part of our bi-monthly Daniel Craig James Bond series, Austin, how are you feeling about doing that episode? I think it may be our best episode yet, but in all seriousness, <laughs> it's been a blast doing this James Bond series. It's been fun returning to him after... You know, 15 years, 13 years, it's been a great return. Hell yeah, I agree. I think that one's going to be a big one. I think we had a lot of fun doing it. I think it came out well, so that would be exciting. Keith, let me bring you in. How are you doing, and how are you feeling about getting back into the MCU for the very first time in like a year and a half, basically, since Far From Home? No, this is cool, um, because I guess we really didn't get too much uh, of Vision, or Wanda and Vision, in the Avenger movies. I mean, we, we get a little bit. But there's so much backstory with them that we didn't see, so I'm excited to talk about this series. Well, I'm trying to think. I mean, those three characters are introduced, and I believe they're each in three MCU movies. I guess Wanda's technically also in Endgame at the end. But they're only in the team-up movies. They were both introduced in Age of Ultron, and then they were both in Civil War, and then Infinity War. So they've always had like limited screen time, so I'm glad that we're kind of getting to dive in here, so I agree with you. Well, speaking of which, WandaVision, like I mentioned, is our very first piece of that MCU goodness since summer 2019. We were supposed to get Black Widow this year. We were supposed to already have gotten Falcon and Winter Soldier, but of course, COVID kind of moved things around. So this is officially now the start of Phase 4 and the first Marvel Studios produced television show. <laughs> we have Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming, Loki, What If, Miss Marvel, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Secret Invasion, Ironheart, and Armor Wars on the way. So that means a lot more hours will be spent Jesus. watching these shows and a lot of fucking bonus series for us. Don't even get me started on how the hell we're going to balance all this and then like the 10 plus Star Wars shows coming as well. I have no idea what we're going to do. But for now, let's not freak out because we all we have is WandaVision. That's all we got to talk about right now. So let's get into it. After the events of Avengers Endgame, Wanda Maximoff and Vision are living the ideal suburban life in the town of Westview, trying to conceal their powers. As they begin to enter new decades and encounter television tropes, the couple suspects that things are not as they seem. This is going to be nine episodes this season, and uh, they dropped the first two for the premiere, so we already have two out of the way. Austin and Keith, I want to hear your non-spoiler thoughts to get us started. Yeah, so for me... Um... You know, I was kind of nervous about this show going into it. I really didn't care for either one of the trailers. Neither one of them really got me excited for this show. And after episodes one and two, I still think I kind of feel that same way. Um, I don't find the sitcom setting very exciting. And I almost view it as a chore that I have to get through to get to the superhero stuff that I'm hoping is coming towards the end of this season. Uh, this is an era of TV that I personally have never really been all that interested in. So this setting was always going to be a hard sell for me. Um, all that being said, there are certainly some fun moments in each of these episodes, but ultimately I'm left wondering what the point of all this is, and I'm hoping we have a good payoff in store for us towards the end of this season. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you in Austin on that, like, what's going to happen? Where's this going to lead to? Uh, as far as the uh, 60s sitcom uh, setting, I liked it. There's definitely some really hilarious moments in it, for sure. And going back to what I was saying before about uh, Wanda and Vision, and, you know, we didn't see these character characters before, and now after watching these episodes, with you know, without saying any spoilers, it just kind of makes me more interested in them. So I'm excited to see what's to come in the later episodes. Yeah, I, I can see that point for sure. I'm I'm definitely with both of you on the looking forward to where it goes aspect. This the show has certainly positioned itself as. This kind of interesting mystery going on in this seemingly just plot-free sitcom setting. So I'm really curious to see where things go. Because we do know it's a modern-day show, obviously. Obviously, 
it's not like they're in a sitcom. Something's going on. So I'm curious to see what that is. That being said, um, yeah, non-spoiler, I think I might be a bit higher on it. I, I had I had a feeling I would be the lowest. I thought for sure I was definitely going to be the, the the least on this show. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, it's going to be a pretty simple take for me. I just had fun with it. It's not like I said, we I can't really critique too much of the plot and the mystery elements that we know about because we just are still early on in the show. So I kind of just was going into it like this is probably not going to be what I expect. So I'm just going to try and like have fun and enjoy the characters and I ended up having more fun than I thought. I just thought it was pretty light and carefree compared to other MCU stuff. So it's certainly different. I love these two actors. I thought they did a great job and the world they're setting up is fun and mysterious and I'm looking forward to things as they go. So I enjoyed it. All right, well, let's go ahead and throw up our spoiler warning. From here on out, we will be talking about these first two episodes, uh, not caring about spoilers. So if you haven't seen episodes one and two of WandaVision, give us a pause right here, go check them out, and then come on back to hear our thoughts. All right, I hope you're gone, because it's time to get into it. Let's look at the full cast and crew first and foremost for Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. So the show itself is created by Jack Schaefer, which I also saw she's uh, the one writing the Black Widow movie. So kind of a little carryover there. Directed by Matt Chackman, written by Jack Schaefer and Gretchen Enders, Episodes 1 and 2 respectively there. And then let's break it down. We have Elizabeth Olsen, of course, as Wanda Maximoff, Paul Bettany as Vision, Katherine Hahn as Agnes, Fred Melamed as Mr. Hart, Deborah Jo Rupp as Mrs. Hart, shout out, that 70s show, of course. And then joining in episode two, we have Tayona Paris as Geraldine and Emma Caulfield Ford as Dottie Jones. Just to start us off here, I'll just say that, you know, I purposely did not want to watch any trailers or read any articles or plot summary of the series. I wanted to go into this show completely blind and you know i was not expecting the sitcom world to be there the entire two episodes i was thinking maybe it would be there just for like the first five minutes like a like a like a pineapple express kind of intro thing um but i think you know this is really building anticipation for what's to come and i'm curious to why you know why they're there and what is lurking in the background for me just just as someone who's not a sitcom person especially like an old-timey sitcom person um I am really glad I was prepared for this going into it because I think if I had turned it on not knowing anything, I probably would have turned it right back off. Um, but I am I am happy we are at least like to color by the time of episode two. Like I thought we were going to spend a lot of time in black and white, especially when the fir- when the start of the second episode opened up and we're still black and white. So I am glad we are at least like now to a color setting. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I think for everybody, it's not like going to be super accessible. And I think people like Austin, yeah, it probably is good to watch the trailer to know what was going on. And we do know from the trailers, I mean, I won't spoil anything for you, Keith, since you didn't watch them, but it is clear that at some point in this show, we will see like stuff going on on the outside, how it may influence things. So this mystery is certainly going to be a huge part of the show, probably the main as it goes on. Now, that being said, I guess we'll talk later about what the ratio will be, like focusing on the sitcom and then this mystery. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I had fun with it. I'm glad I watched the trailers too. I feel like I don't know if I would have been disappointed, but I would have been more, I think, in Keith's camp wondering kind of what the point is. And I I think I would have liked the mystery, but I probably would have wanted more. So, again, I don't think it's any shock they dropped two episodes, like Austin said. I think they definitely wanted to get through that and get to color because it's, I think, just more accessible. So we'll see where things go. Do you guys think we stay in this sitcom setting for the entirety of the season? Or do you think like maybe there's like a midway jump where we're now like it's a regular like modern day show? I think it eventually might get to a modern day show. I think that's what, I think that's what most people are hoping for, so I doubt they'll disappoint. Yeah, um I imagine the most of the show will be like this, the sitcom stuff. I think as it goes on, I think what, this was 50s and 60s, so I'm assuming we're definitely going to get 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and I'm counting that would be 6 episodes total, and we know there's 9. So maybe they go up to 2000s and then at that point it becomes like to kind of wrap it up. There's more of a focus on what's going on on the outside. But I do think as the show goes on, I think we are going to see more of the outside. Like look at episode one. It's so just bare bones. Like there's very little mystery. Episode two, there's a lot more. 
And so I feel like as the episodes go on, even though they're still going to be the sitcom, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of like these kind of in-world fourth wall breaks. So I, I don't think it's going to be too long of a wait before we actually see what's going on at, at the very least. So they, they kind of did like I Love Lucy for the first episode. Do you, do you think as we get closer to modern day, do you think they're going to do like Friends, uh, How I Met Your Mother, like The Office? Do you think they're going to try to do any of that stuff? I think we'll definitely get to a Friends moment. Yeah, I can see them doing that for sure. I think and I don't think it's that'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't think it's any any surprise. I think it's definitely going to be on purpose. But for Elizabeth Olsen, I think they're definitely going to do Full House stuff as well for the 90s episode. So I think that'll be fun. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm really curious how far they go, because like you said, I mean, you have to imagine maybe there'll be friends elements somewhere, but how far do they go? <laughs> like, do they do an office episode of like Vision <laughs> in the office? And then... If they do an office episode, I'll love it. <laughs> that and would be I'll pretty funny. sound like a hypocrite, but I'll love every second of it if they do an office episode. <laughs> like a uh, Vision and like full makeup doing one of the talking heads in the office, <laughs> just like oh, in man. the show. That dude. Yeah, <laughs> I would love that. And then I would just have to kind of nag on everything I said in this episode. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just how beholden are they going to be to the actual sitcom stuff and how, how much variety? Because with these first two... There is differences, obviously. It's like I love Lucy and then something more like Bewitched, I guess. But I think I think things are going to get really different really quick. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm still excited to see where this season goes. Just for me, the first two episodes were not that exciting. So I still am leaving plenty of room to like fall in love with this show as we get into it. I think it's honestly just the setting of the first two episodes. Because I don't, like I said, I don't find this era of TV exciting at all. So I'm glad we're through it at least in one week. I'm glad we didn't have to do like episode, like one week episode one and then another week we're still in this era. So That's I'm, I'm glad they did two at once. And I think by the second episode, it was kind of already getting out of that sitcom thing. They didn't have as much of the like laugh track in the background yeah. as they did in the first episode. First episode was just straight up 60s sitcom. Right. I mean, I you really didn't get much of uh, the Marvel background in the background, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It was, it was, yeah, it was just a sitcom with these two characters who just happened to be from the Avenger movies. Right, exactly. Um, I, I don't think, I think they probably wish things could have gone, I mean, I, I assume everybody in the world, of course, wishes that COVID hadn't happened, but I bet the people are Marvel are kind of a little bit down because Black Widow was supposed to be this huge action movie to start off phase four. And then, like I said, Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to be our first Disney plus Marvel show, which we know takes place after Endgame. It's a bit more of a straightforward show showing us what they're doing afterwards and with Falcon trying to accept the Captain America mantle. And this was supposed to come out afterwards. So I, I imagine it. they probably would have preferred to give us something more straightforward and then something crazy like this. But because of just production and this being done first, they had to go with it. So, you know, it it, it is so different than anything we've seen. So I appreciated that at the least. But I bet they kind of were hoping that things would have gone differently in terms of when things came out. Well, and they also moved this one up just to try and give people content, too, which I do appreciate. Like, they didn't delay it just because it kind of got out of sync with their original plan. So yeah. I'm glad that, like, they were like, hey, this is done. Let's put it out because everyone needs something to watch. So I am glad they did that. And it's cool that it's, it's not a Marvel movie. Like, it's to this is totally – starting off totally different, obviously, for the reasons we all mentioned. It's also crazy that the actors from the movies are in this show. Like this is kind of the first yeah. thing. This is the first kind of show of its, of its type to really kind of do this, to take cinematic characters and bring them into TV world as well. So it's going to be cool to see how this goes. Yeah. I'm excited. Cause like you said, Keith, it doesn't feel like this is a like a nine hour movie that they just like, like not to, not to shit on it, but I'm still so curious how Zack Snyder's cut of justice league works. Like, are, are they literally just going to like, cause it's a movie, but they're going to release it as a, basically a show. So how do they cut it? This doesn't feel like a movie they cut. This was made to be a TV show, which is so cool. And that's what I'm looking forward to with the other ones. And you know what? If people don't love the show, the cool thing is this, this show runs until March 5th, I saw. And then almost immediately, I think the next week, Falcon and Winter Soldier starts. That goes for however many weeks. And then Loki starts. So they really are kind of have it locked down in terms of when things are coming out. So we're going to have at least those three shows basically back to back. And those two are going to be more straightforward. So we're getting kind of the fun, light, weird stuff out of the way. And then moving on to that. That being said, who knows how this show ends? Like Austin said, I mean, things could just throw us for a complete loop. Maybe we'll be totally surprised by the end, but 
Well, speaking of, I, I really like the likeness of the show. Like I said, um, it's just so campy, cheesy, fun, like old school sitcoms. But it has this like real palpable sense of dread in the background. Like it actually kind of I found it unsettling at times. Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany killed it. And they are so fun to watch together. And their chemistry has only gotten better and more natural. Like we talked about, they really have barely been in the MCU. And then Vision died in Infinity War. And we were supposed to believe that they were in love at that point, but there just wasn't enough screen time here. Like, I really believe in their relationship, which is so cool. And I like that the plots, too, like they're they're just so simple, like the dinner confusion I thought was pretty funny and the talent show in episode two. And I thought they found cool ways to actually utilize their powers as well. I'm glad you brought up the talent show scene because that's that's a highlight to me of these two episodes. I thought it was so funny. And like you said, that just the chemistry of, of Olsen and Bettany on screen together is so great. And they really are kind of standouts in the show. I love the whole gum thing. How the gum <laughs> messes up his entire... Yeah. He makes him drunk, <laughs> entire basically. Machine. <laughs> yeah. But, they, but the, you know, but it goes back to like the 60s sitcom, uh, like uh, animation, where like the gum, yeah. it, it kind of shows like his skeleton and the gum goes down and just gets into the, the few gears and it's grinding in there and it messes them all up. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. It was so funny to see like I Dream of Genie or Bewitched and anim- like animatics basically, but using like Vision and Scarlet Witch. It was so funny to watch. And speaking of the talent show, it had my favorite moment whenever she like Vision is like, oh, a feat of strength and picks up the piano and then she does it too and then reveals that it's 2D. And then they just cuts to the like the sad guy that got fired in the last episode. Like, that was my grandmother's piano. <laughs> <laughs> that, that bit got me i thought that was pretty funny his co-workers are funny I, yeah i don't know about you guys but i just found myself laughing a lot in this show watching these two episodes yeah i don't know maybe some of it was po- wasn't supposed to be funny but i don't know i, thought, I think it I was, was i think it was fucking vision yeah. not being invited to the neighborhood watch and then just inserting himself and them not doing anything just like let's get down to business and they just eat danishes and stuff and then uh, the guy in the first episode getting fired, like we said, because he didn't impress his boss enough whenever he was invited to dinner. <laughs> so he just got fired for it. Oh, so good. So good. All those scenes made me chuckle. But for me, I'm glad you read up the sense of dread, Matt. Yeah. I find that stuff the most interesting here. And, and of course, it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But I'm just so curious to see, like, what's going on in this show. I don't know. That yeah, that choking scene was, like, haunting. Haunting. Watching Deborah Jo Rupp from that 70s show just, like, stone face going, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. As the guy's choking. <laughs> yeah. And then it cuts to Wanda, creepy. who's like, save him, Vision. And then he uses his powers to save him. And then they just immediately leave. But... Then things are all good. He's like, no, you've been promoted, Vision. It's like, what the hell is going on? And it's so creepy. Like, ugh. And then, like, the radio scene, too. Like, ugh. I think the helicopter scene, the helicopter scene is what got me. Just because she just has, like, a look of terror on her face. And it's it's so jarring because it's red. It's the first, like, thing in color that we've seen in the show. And so it sticks out even more amongst the black and white background. It was Iron Man colors. It was uh, Rod. Yeah. Uh, red and, yeah. Red and yellow. Hot, rod, hot Rod Red. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the yellow the, or the burnt orange or whatever. Yeah. Um, the mystery, I can't stop thinking about it after watching these episodes. I'm just so curious. But to that point, Austin, pointing out the helicopter scene and her reaction, it kind of makes me think that Wanda knows what's going on. But she's choosing not to engage with it. She's choosing just to not accept it and live this idyllic life, which we also see at the end when she rewinds time. She's like, no, not doing that. And then she just rewinds time and goes back to the happy scene when she's with Vision and pregnant. So I'm, I'm, do you guys feel the same way? Do you think that Wanda actually knows that this isn't real? Yeah, I, I'm really curious about that, too, because I, I can't decide if they're in this world that because Wanda created it and she's trying to hold on to Vision's death. Or if or if she's in this world, then there's also like kind of like a sinister plot behind this. So I, I'm really curious to know who's watching them on that TV screen. I have to imagine she created it. I think with this show, they are really leaning into Wanda because Scarlet Witch in the comics is one of the most powerful people, period. I mean, she literally in the comics creates an alternate reality with her powers. So I think that might be what they're leaning into. Like she created it to have this opportunity to have a life with Vision since he's now dead. Um, but yeah, it it could be something else. We have no idea. And even if that is the case, like Austin said, why are people watching them? And who's calling out to her on the radio? Yeah. It's like, it seems like she just created this place to be happy, but then why is there something sinister going on? That's the more interesting thing. And the beekeeper also, he had a patch or something that was a sword. And in the, in the scene at the end of episode one, where there's somebody watching and there's like another thing that is a sword. 
And I know in the comics and in the MCU, there's S.H.I.E.L.D., but there's also an organization called S.W.O.R.D. So I guess that's who's watching them and why. And is this beekeeper somebody that actually got into this like bubble or is it something she's created herself? Like, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. The first time I saw the beekeeper, I had to pause it because it looked like Benedict Cumberbatch. And I was like, is that Dr. Strange? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was <laughs> so caught off guard. <laughs> They had a really diverse cast in here. I mean, most of them, you know, were really believable as being in a 60s slash 50s sitcom. I especially enjoyed uh, Catherine Hahn as uh, Agnes and Deborah Jo Rupp as well. Uh, I've been a fan of Catherine uh, Hahn since, you know, Parks and Rec. I thought she was really funny in that uh, and also Step Brothers. But yeah, she's hilarious and definitely plays like the 50s, 60s housewife perfectly. Uh, besides the main characters, were there any other performances you guys enjoyed? For someone being in a side role, a standout for me is David Payton as Herb. Just he had so many funny moments in that neighborhood watch meeting, and he just he had me laughing every time he had a line on screen. Vision calling him Sherbert or something like that on accident when he's drunk. <laughs> yeah, and then it just cuts him, and he's like, oh, "It's Herb." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, there was lots of standouts here, just like fun little performances that clearly we're gonna see, like because they're doing the time jump in episode one and two, but it's still. Like, the characters in the world don't seem to know that. Like, Deborah Jo Rupp is still the same age, clearly, after they go from 50s to 60s. So I'm glad that we're probably going to see all these people in, like, fun little recurring roles. Herb was great. Um, I like the boss, Mr. Hart. He was kind of fun. <laughs> and um, who else? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think that's probably it. I thought I thought um, Geraldine seems interesting. She I don't know what's going on with her. And... um. Yeah, that's kind of it. I thought everybody was great. I mean, Keith was right. Catherine Hahn is the standout. She was so funny. I think she's just so fun to watch. So that scene again at the talent show where they're calling for volunteers and she's just like, take Agnes's husband or something like that. It was just like, <laughs> I just love her being this weird, like she's trying to insert herself in everything. Kind of made me wonder if maybe she's playing a part. Does she know what's going on? Kind of made me wonder that. So it might be another piece of the mystery. I was thinking that too. I saw a brief, I didn't read the article, but I did see like speculation that she may secretly be a villain. So I'm interested to see where her character goes for sure. Yeah. Cause there was that point whenever she's standing on the sidewalk and like the mailman yeah. walks by and she's kind of, she, you can bang, bang. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he walks away and she kind of stares at him weird. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it kind of looks like she's playing a part. Yeah. And yeah, so she also inter inserts herself right when Wanda finds the helicopter, which is kind of like a really convenient time to show up. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, I think everybody else might just be constructs or part of this world. But if anybody's going to turn out to be, you know, a villain like Austin said, or just somebody that knows what's going on, she seems to be the one. So I'm curious how that will play out. And even if not, I think she'll just be funny along the way. So I'm happy that that will be the case too. And I'll shout out to Emma uh, Caulfield. As, oh, yeah. Uh, or Emma, Emma Caulfield Ford as Dottie. She was good. I thought she was a good character. How does a housewife get blood out of white linen? We do it ourselves. <laughs> was so funny. And Wanda like, thanks for giving me the task of cleaning up everything <laughs> or something like that. So good. So good. So like we mentioned already, I personally, I think you guys not as much, but I wanted to bring this up because while I love the nostalgia fueled throwbacks to like the Dick Van Dyke show, I love Lucy, Bewitched and all that. I kind of grew up watching reruns of those with my with my mom a lot and then by myself sometimes like after school and on weekends and there's nothing else to watch. So I kind of ended up getting into them and having fond memories of them. But we know we are moving into the 70s next time around with all the color change as well. So as we move forward, I'm curious what might appeal more to you guys. We, we kind of just joked about The Office and stuff, and who knows, maybe that could happen, but are there any other kind of old school shows or even some from the 90s and 2000s that you would like to see kind of be the benchmark for those future episodes? Yeah, maybe like something like Drake and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that, Keith, because I was gonna, I was gonna say, if we're doing early 2000s, we got to do Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> golly! I feel like it's just the people making it are probably too old, you know, to do that. But I feel like if there was somebody younger, we would totally get like Vision as Mr. Mosby. And, um... Oh man, <laughs> like... give it to me, Marvel! Give it to oh, me! Oh god, that would be so good. <laughs> Drake, Keith just so honestly saying Drake and Josh might be my favorite thing. God, that would be so <laughs> damn good. Who would, who would Vision and who would Wanda be in Drake and Josh? Who do you think? Who would Wanda would have to be the mom. I guess so. I guess Vi Vision is the weatherman. <laughs> the weatherman dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel there definitely is a way for them to do like a Disney Channel episode in a sense. Like you could yeah. kind of cut two kind of different sets. Like you could do Halloween Town, Wizards of Waverly Place, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. I don't know how it would work and it's not going to happen, but there is potential to do that oh with God. what they have set up right now. Be so good, dude. God, I pray that that happens. I'm just curious what the most modern thing we get will be. While I said I do have some nostalgia for this older stuff, I certainly definitely have more of a actual fondness for 90s in particular and then early 2000s, which I think we know we are going to get. I just don't know what kind of the – what style or what show they'll use as the benchmark. So I'm so curious like how, like how modern will they go. So I'm curious what they pick. I have like a sneaking suspicion that – They'll give us a friend styled episode and then that'll kind of be like the cap off because like everybody watching will have seen friends. And so like if they do that themed episodes, it'll probably be a big hit. And I feel like that'll be the end of like the sitcom stuff that we get. And then after that, it might move into like kind of a more modern TV show. And another thing, like, will it always be comedy based or maybe it could be like a drama, like a Mad Men kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Or like a Days of Our Lives kind of deal where it's like all just dramatic Everybody's crying all the time. Yeah, Breaking Bad. Oh, that would be kind of cr- <laughs> Breaking Bad. Yeah. So clearly, this this sitcom stuff is is definitely going to be leading somewhere. For me, right now, in the scope of the MCU, like the events of the plot that are happening, like the talent show and, and the and the dinner party, they feel kind of trivial. So, are you guys hoping to actually have some like superhero events by the end of this season, or, or would you be fine if it just stayed in the sitcom stuff till the end? Uh, I mean, as far as theories go, I think. My theory is that if this is like a just a construct in her in Wanda's head, maybe this is taking place like right whenever Thanos is about to kill Vision uh, at, the, at the end of uh, Infinity War, and and they're calling her. I don't. And maybe like they're in the middle of battle, and this is all just one like big dream sequence. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, that's a pretty wild theory, though. I like it, though. I like it. We, I mean, with those Infinity Stones, they, it's just they can do anything. Basically, that's what they set them up for. So who knows if those are in play or if it's a dream, like you said. I, as for me, I'm still leaning towards. I think this probably takes place after Avengers Endgame, in the sense that at some point, you know, just her with her grief over Vision being gone, and then I guess you know just how crazy all that was and losing some friends on the way. I think somehow with her power, she's created this bubble of some kind and it's i don't know where it is and she's inside it with envisions there she's created this world and i don't know why again my big question is still then why are people watching her so my guess is maybe she's created this space that if it goes too long unchecked then maybe it'll start hurting people somehow or maybe dragging them into this bubbles or something like that so people on the outside are trying to stop it somehow and i'm guessing this beekeeper or sword, the organization are keeping tabs, trying to figure out why. But again, the biggest flaw in that theory is why are they watching her on a TV? It doesn't seem like they're being very proactive. It seems like they're just trying to watch her. And then with the radio, they're calling out to her. So I have I've no clue. I have no clue. But I am leaning towards that she has created this on her own. And it is like a real thing that you could enter, basically. I think it's something she created, this like world somehow. So what I'm thinking is is maybe this takes place like – during the snap but before hmm. the final circle stuff of endgame like maybe this is where she went when she got snapped oh, and then the, yeah. the people calling out to her on the radio is whenever they start bringing people back for that final battle of endgame i think that's what i was trying to say awesome you've ordered it way better than i did yeah so it's during the snap gotcha. and yeah whenever they're trying to call her back yeah i like that but like that, that still doesn't explain why people are watching her so who knows what yeah, how that plays yeah. into this i don't know that's 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 the bigger mystery to me like i'm not as i don't care as much about how it came about because I'm just assuming that with how powerful she is, she created it. But I don't know why people are watching or how or I don't know. But that, that's what I'm so looking forward to seeing play out for sure. I am a little bit concerned that we might have a Mandalorian season one situation on our hands no. where this whole season is just multiple side stories that don't lead anywhere. I am a little bit worried about that, but we're going to have to see what happens. The one thing that is clearly, I think, being set up better is that, yeah, well, I think the individual plot, like you could make, you could break it down to the plot of episode one is, oh no, I thought it was my anniversary. I thought the boss was coming for dinner, like the whole dinner confusion. Episode two is just getting ready for a talent show. I think each episode will have something like that, but at the very least, unlike Mandalorian season one, 
from the from the jump, basically, they have been saying the main thing going on in the background is this mystery. So they have been at least consistent over two episodes with that. And I think they're going to be even more as things go forward. I hope that's the case or else I think I would start to lean more towards what you're saying. Like I, the worst case scenario is it leads to nowhere, but I don't think that will happen. Marvel is so good about setting up stuff for the immediate next thing. So I, th- I think we're in good hands. That's I true. think we're in good hands. Did you guys watch the end of each episode hoping for a post credit scene? <laughs> I did kind of scroll through just to make sure. But I bet last episode we'll get something just like uh, the Book of Boba Fett with Mando season two. So we'll get something here. We'll get something here. All right. Well, everybody, I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of our upcoming content. Also, if you wouldn't mind sharing us with a friend, that really is the best way to help us continue to grow the show. At The Arnie's is our social and thearnie's.media is the website. We will be back on Tuesday for the next episode in our James Bond series, Quantum of Solace. That's right. This is our bi-monthly James Bond, the Daniel Craig one specifically, series. So in two weeks, we'll be back with Skyfall. Our other big thing coming up is we are going to be playing D&D for the first time, Dungeons and Dragons, and we are going to be recording it and essentially releasing that as a podcast to see what you guys kind of think. So we created our characters. It's going to be fun. And our guest and Dungeon Master is going to be Nick from the Very Good Adventuring team. So shout out to him for coming aboard and wanting to do this with us to teach us how to play and get us set up. So it's definitely going to be more different than anything we've done in terms of the actual episode structure and how it comes to be a final product. But I think it's going to be really cool. I'm excited. Should we tease like kind of what our character and class is going to be? I'm going to be a half human, half elf. I'm going to be a tiefling. I'm going to be a goblin. Ooh. Wow. What a treat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Heck yeah. And uh, yeah, check us out on Instagram at the Arnie's. Feel free to direct message us your thoughts on this episode and upcoming episodes. Please catch up and watch Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace and look forward to uh, listening to our episode on Quantum. Also, give us your theories on WandaVision. What do you think is going to happen? Where is it going to lead? Also, if you know if it's Quantum of Solace or Quantum <laughs> of Solace, please message us because because we keep fucking it up and one of us is definitely wrong. That's okay. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep it going. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great week. See you. Bye.